Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, and you read the title, we're here debating, discussing whether or not Kyle Lowry will be an NBA Hall of Famer, and this has been a topic of discussion I've seen across a lot of NBA forums, and basically everywhere, now that Kyle Lowry is a six-time All-Star, he congrats, and also shout out to Kyle Lowry for getting selected to the All-Star game, and Nick Nurse, All-Star coach, the, the Raptors are really raking in all the All-Stars this year, but Riker, it's it's a really interesting discussion as Kyle Lowry now an NBA champion as well. It's some people may shake their head and say, "Oh, no chance," compulsively. But if you look at the numbers and you look at all the data, that might say otherwise. Well, it's gonna at some point raise the question, Ben: Is there actually a criteria to get selected to get enshrined into the Basketball Hall of Fame? The answer is kind of no, mm-hmm. and. Because I, I needed to search it up as well, because we're going to be talking about players that have had less stats, less accolades, less awards, less championships, everything that are all inducted and enshrined into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. So I was curious. I took it upon myself. What are the criteria? And it's literally, I kid you not, this is word for word off of their website. They just need to have been retired for three years, I believe. And mm-hmm. then in their fourth year, they're eligible to be nominated yep. for the Basketball Hall of Fame. And then there's basically just a selection committee that votes. And if they get a majority of votes, they get induced or introduced into the Hall of Fame. So it's completely subjective. There is no objective figures, stats, anything that's required to get into the Hall of Fame, which makes this a very interesting conversation. Ben, could Kyle Lowry be inducted into the Hall of Fame? Absolutely. Could he not? I guess it depends on who's selecting him. So what are your thoughts about that? Well, it, it, Kyle Lowry is a very interesting player. As the start of his career, it took him a while to really get going. In Memphis, you know, didn't average the highest amount of points. Like in Memphis, his career averages with the team is eight points per game. Uh, about only four assists, so not not a lot of impact in his first three seasons. And again, with the Houston Rockets, nothing too crazy. He definitely upped his level of performance, but in the four years he played there, only averaged about 12 points, never made an all-star team. His assists were better, six assists, was a starting guard. But again, his his career really didn't take off till he made it to Toronto, and that's when he really started taking the league by storm. And obviously, as we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, a six-time all-star now, uh, NBA champion and inter- and not just an NBA champion, an integral piece. Uh, probably few would argue he was the second best player on that team. There, some might say Pascal Siakam, but in terms of value, especially in the playoffs, I think it's tough to debate that he's a uh, he was the sec wasn't the second best player on that team. And he was also an All NBA guy in 2015, 2016, made the All NBA third team. And he's he's also just been a complete winner for the Toronto Raptors. And one interesting thing, I, I pulled this graph off Reddit. I don't know where specifically I found it, but when you look at the 25 most impactful players over the past decade. And you can look, uh, the graph is on the screen now, you can see that Kyle Lowry, the only players that have added more wins to their teams over the past decade, so from 2009 to 2019, is LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Chris Paul, James Harden, Russell Westbrook. Those are the only names that have added more wins to their their respective teams and what teams they've played for over Kyle Lowry. And you look at those six guys, Kyle Lowry, seventh on that list. Those six guys ahead of him are surefire Hall of Famers. And then you have some guys like Dwight Howard, Draymond Green, Paul George, Aldridge, Nowitzki, even Gasol. They're they're below Lowry. And those are guys that probably you can make an argument for being in the Hall of Fame. But it, it's really it's really interesting when you look at all the, the stats, the accolades and all that. He looks like a guy that should be definitely in the conversation, but should be inducted in there. Yeah, but Ben... I also look at it like a lot of people that get inducted to the Hall of Fame seem to have a narrative Mm -hmm. because, like I said, there's no objective stat. Like you have guys in there that have won championships, guys in there that have never won any championships, guys with pretty weak stat lines, to be honest. And you can rattle off a few after we can break down some guys that Kyle Lowry objectively is a better player than even though they're in the, uh, the Hall of Fame. But it seems like a common thread seems to be they have something memorable about them, right? And it's really on reputation, I think, that people get introduced into the Hall of Fame. And I think that the one issue, the one argument that you might have against Kyle Lowry is that despite him being as good as he is, and if you're a fan of the Toronto Raptors, you will know the impact that he's had on the franchise, 
the time, the only time that the franchise itself has come into the national media, right, into the lens of the American media when they won that championship, he would have been 100% overshadowed by Kawhi Leonard, Mm -hmm. right? So I think that this season is really important, or at least any season before he retires, I think he'll have a much better shot at this conversation overall if he's able to have success without a superstar on the team. Because right now, it's it, he was never the number one guy in the team, right? But if they were winning the championship this season, maybe he could be in that conversation, right? I, if it was today that he retired, mm-hmm. would he get accepted or would at some point he get uh, into the Hall of Fame? I don't know. And I, and I think, like I said, it's because he was kind of overshadowed in that one championship season. And otherwise, how often do people pay attention to the Toronto Raptors, right, despite the success that he had on the team? Yeah, no, that's definitely a great point to bring up because the NBA, all, for in terms of Hall of Fame, the narrative is a huge thing. And it's not just necessarily the stats that you bring to the table. And we've seen guys like Arvita Sabonis get in who didn't have the greatest NBA career, but what he did on an international scale and the, the performances he had over in Europe and the USSR and all that, that's, that's a big reason that he got in there. And some players, due to their collegiate careers, get a bump and... Yeah, so the the narrative is a huge thing that's really important for making the Hall of Fame. And I agree with you. I think it could go two ways for Kyle Lowry because you look at one way and you see the label that the mainstream average layman NBA fan will say and, oh, playoff choker, oh, could never get over the hump. And, you know, people that watch the, the Toronto Raptors, I think a lot of people would agree he was the alpha over DeMar DeRozan, even though DeMar scored most of the points. Lowry was our leader and... In most most of the big game situations, especially in the playoffs, especially that 2016 run, it was Lowry that really sparked the team was the number one option. But Demar, it's it's one A one B when Demar and Lowry were there. But yeah, so the, he did have a kind of a underwhelming reputation across the league. But amongst Raptors fans, he he was pretty. A lot, of, a lot of Raptors fans have a lot of respect and know what Kyle Lowry brings to the table. But then you could look at it the other way. And you look at the accolades that Kyle Lowry will probably have at the end of his career and already has at this point. He's already the league, uh, the team franchise leader in assists. He's up there in points. He's 60 points away from Vince Carter to be third on that list. He's uh, when you make all when we may see all the polls and all that. Usually people say Kawhi is the best player, but in terms of greatest, greatest Toronto Raptor, the face of the franchise, especially now that Demar Derozan's been traded, the poor taste that Vince left in people's mouths when he left. Kyle Lowry's definitive, definitively the face of the Toronto Raptors. He's the only guy that's stuck around yeah. through it all, been the NBA champion, and the fact that he is a face of an NBA franchise that has been, had such success over the course of since basically he's come in. It's been a the Raptors are no longer considered a tier 2 franchise. They're a top level franchise. Yeah. The fact that he's has that face, that recognition, a country behind him and brought the first title to the city. The narrative could go two ways. Do you go the yeah, mainstream but Kawhi brought the fan first, the, or the Kawhi Raptors? brought the first championship. Kawhi brought the first championship to the city. I think, like, Toronto, because I wouldn't even put, I, I would put who brought the championship, like, I'd even put Fred up there in the mix in terms of his critical buckets. I would agree with your assertment about greatness, right? Mm-hmm. He's definitely the greatest Toronto Raptors player, but I can give two case examples. Vince Carter might get inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame. Merely because, and again, this comes to reputation and narrative, he had his Vince Sanity era, right? So he holds that, like, that's what he's known for. And then also just kicking around in the NBA for so long. It's like he's kind of forcing you to always keep his name in mind to some extent. I don't think that he's a better player than Kyle Lowry, right? I don't think he ever was, right? But he might get accepted to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, his his narrative is not as good. His stats, especially when he was younger in his younger seasons, he's had a couple 28-point-per-game seasons. And is an eight-time All-Star, but again, I think a lot of that's yeah. The but Kyle Lowry did that stuff. way more consistent. Yeah, but no. the one, this one might be a tough pill to swallow here, Ben. When DeRozan was on the Toronto Raptors, right, mm-hmm. with Kyle Lowry, Demar Derozan was still the number one guy, right? We could say Kyle Lowry was the backbone of the team, but Demar Derozan was still the man while he was here. When when he and, was there, I was arguing against that. I I. To, throughout his, the tenure of those two guys, Kyle Lowry was always the number one guy on the Raptors in my option, even though DeMar was the face. I always looked at DeMar as the face guy, but the, that that was certainly greatly up for debate, though, when But in terms of stats, DeMar DeRozan was the outperformer. He scored more points. But the he advanced stats and all that he was also the same. He was also the all-star for the same amount of time. Like He was getting in there as much as Kyle Lowry was getting in there. All I'm saying now is... 
would you have any? What, is there even a sliver of an argument to have Demar Derozan in um, the Hall of Fame? The answer is no. Like, there's no chance you'd even consider Demar Derozan to be a Hall of Fame guy. And it's literally just because you 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 removed him from Toronto Raptors, a successful team, put him onto the Spurs, an unsuccessful team. Now his performance is kind of irrelevant. And I'm saying the argument from because the only the only way you get into the Hall of Fame is a group of people just vote you. Mm-hmm. They just say, yeah, he deserves to go in. So if they're looking at Kyle Lowry the exact same way as we would look at DeMar DeRozan now, right? This is a guy, he's pretty good. He's got good stats, right? We take away their their best player. Now the team is whatever it is. Like, I I would agree that I think Kyle Lowry should be in there, but I'm not on the voting committee. And I'm yep. saying, like, are they seeing the same things that we're seeing from Kyle Lowry? Are they looking at him and being, in the time that, the Toronto Raptors were not a championship team, but a good team. Are they saying he, this was the man? This was the backbone. This was the best player. He's the greatest Raptor. Or are they saying like we've never even heard about the Raptors until they had that one championship season with Kawhi Leonard on it? I I think they'll look at the advanced stats and the Hall of Fame board does I think take in a lot into account, including the storylines. And I think it's tough to ignore all the advanced stuff that Kyle Lowry had over DeMar DeRozan and just watching back on those games because it wasn't like the Raptors were irrelevant they still went uh, made it to the playoffs and were beating teams had exciting games during the stretch especially as their seasons moved along further and then we got some bigger names on the team like Ibaka and those guys but I think the the committee would see that Kyle Lowry was the the number one option was the reason we were winning and the thing about DeMar DeRozan is even when he was on the Raptors there was questions about does he really, can he really be on a, he can certainly be a star player on a good team, but can he be, is he what makes your team great? And his on-off numbers, the the team was always better when Lowry's on the court over DeMar, and DeMar was honestly a negative, and we've seen it with San Antonio now. And the fact that Lowry, because the Spurs were a phenomenal franchise, that's the thing. Because we, we have the perception of them now as a team that might not make the playoffs this year and all that sort of stuff. But they've had Greg Popovich. They've made the playoffs year after year, been title contenders. And DeMar got slotted in there and couldn't make it out of the first round his first season there. And they've underperformed, I think, to the expectations, even though they, they weren't super high when he was there. But I, I think the the separation after the trade happened is really not made the DeMar Lowry comparison comparable to this point because Lowry went on to be an NBA champion and continues to be all-stars. He's overtaken DeMar now by two in terms of all-star appearances. And I think that, especially with just, you know, with 2020 hindsight, people will look back and see, okay, Lowry was that guy. So I, I think that's the that's the, the way the voters will be looking at. And the Hall of Fame is super subjective, so it's tough to really tell. But if you look at basketball references, per, percent chances, Hall of Fame probability stat, they have Kyle Lowry at an 86% chance right now, just above Chauncey Billups and Dave DeBusher. So it's, it's going to be – it's really interesting just to see how it all will play out with Kyle Lowry and what, how his career will move along further. Yeah, Ben, absolutely. And I mean, we're going a little bit long here, but it, it is a, a pretty good conversation. But it, like, there really is some players that he just is a better player than yeah. that are already into the Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. And I think that that is maybe the most interesting point is he's won a championship, right? Mm-hmm. That's something that a lot of people have not done. He yeah. he is a really good personality, right? He has a fantastic love for the game that I think people can really connect with especially the Toronto Raptors uh fans right that's another mm-hmm. thing and then his stat line has been phenomenal for his entire tenure in Toronto Raptors so and the advanced I, I think stats it's a guy that's definitely him. more than the advanced stats love him yeah yeah so I think he's a guy I I I would hope that he gets into the NBA Hall of Fame yeah most definitely and to bring up some of the names that you're inferring right now about guys that are a bit sketchy on whether they should have been in the Hall of Fame there's a guy named Bill Bradley who is a one-time All-Star, a two-time NBA champion, played for those Knicks teams that won, but one-time All-Star. He's never averaged over 16 points per game. His high, his best season was 16. His career average is about 12 per game. Never averaged more than four rebounds. Never averaged more than a few assists. I think four, four again. So it's 
that's a guy that's really confusing. He's only he only played in the league for about eleven years, but won those two championships with the Knicks. So they're they're kind of get boosted. Another Knicks guy, Earl Monroe. He's more more of a known player, but is only again a four time All Star. Uh, won all NBA team. He won one NBA champion with the championship with the Knicks, and he had his rookie rookie in second year. He averaged about 24, 25 points per game, but then went down to below Kyle Lowry's numbers, especially what he's been putting up with the Raptors. So that's that's a guy I think Kyle Lowry could objectively be, you know, more established, especially when they have equal championships. Uh, Dennis Rodman was a huge controversial guy to get into the Hall of Fame as he was a two-time All-Star, certainly a big name, and a guy that you see the name of, and the name definitely helps with the Hall of Fame induction, but he never averaged over, he averaged 11 points per game one season, and then never over nine there after that, but certainly had some ridiculous rebounding seasons, averaged 13 rebounds for his career, had a couple of 18 rebound seasons, so that's a, that one, he's also won five championships, so that's something that will that people will bring up, but uh, Gail Goodridge is another name out there that Kyle Lowry has more All-Stars than him, uh, equal NBA championships, and same amount of All-NBAs, and has better stats, better stats in his high peak careers. I guess Goodridge averaged more points, but again, wasn't really the main guy on those teams either. I'm just kind of listing through guys here, Riker, but there's definitely players in the NBA that if you compare their stats to, in the NBA Hall of Fame, you compare their stats to Kyle Lowry, it's objectively Kyle Lowry should have the edge over those guys. There's some guys out of the league, out of the Hall of Fame that you might be able to say should deserve it over Lowry right now. But I think Lowry, basketball reference has him at 86% of going into the Hall of Fame, and it might catch some people off guard as he's had a more, especially amongst mainstream NBA fans, not the greatest of reputations due to some weird accusations that he was a playoff choker, which was completely unwarranted and only lit really occurred during the Wizards series where he was grossly injured. I think I think Kyle Lowry's going to make it. I, If I had to put my money on it, I'd bet Kyle Lowry's going in there, especially where he has more career to go, to go about. He's only 33 years old. The Raptors want to keep him around. And we have another playoff run coming this year, Riker. Ben, when we win the next three championships, the next three years in a row, then no there's no argument whatsoever. He will be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> it's a great place to end it. <laughs> Certainly. And let us know what you guys think. Let, uh, let us know in the comment section below. You're the best for making this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all the cool stuff. Riker, do you have any last words about Kyle Lowry, Hall of Fame hopeful, Kyle Lowry, and six-time All-Star? I'll take your bet, Ben. Actually, or I'll bet. I'll bet with you. All right, we'll, we'll double down. We'll get <laughs> twice our money back. I love it. Cheers.